Pac was a busy guy, man. I mean, all the history he had in L.A., then Marin City, b more. Then you always forget about Atlanta. And it's like, golly, bro. He was on the move, man. Yeah, he was. And that guy never slept, man. Yeah, he just, never slept. Just hanging with him. When I first seen him, I seen him a couple of times before I met him. He used to be outside of Spelman doing Shakespeare verbatim with the girls around him. And they would be going, oh, oh. I literally got my car to go watch this dude do Shakespeare. Mm. He was doing Hamlet, Macbeth, off the top of his head, just like the Broadway play. And he was just knocking them back. And then he would come over to the rim shop. And then him and Redman and Keith and I'm making a battle. Uh, and have the, I would have these like 24-hour rap battles at the, the rim shop. And Pac would come down there and just give. He, he would rap against homeless people. I would leave, come back, they still rapping. I would leave, come back again. They still rapping in the cypher. Mm -hmm. Battling anybody. Yeah, Pac was the real one, man. Was um, real one. He was one of them dudes, man, that was like famous, had money and stuff, but he still act like a regular person, man. Like he ain't let none of that get to his head, yo. You got to respect that, yo. Let me share one more thing about Pac before I leave about his time in Atlanta. You know, Pac would come to Atlanta as a refuge from New York and California. This is where he lived, right? So he'll come here and all this fun stuff that people like to do, like go to shooting ranges, go to bowling, go to the movies, go to the titty clubs, you know, we would do here. You know, he couldn't do those things in New York and California. Mm. He would come here and be able to unwind mm. here in Georgia because his home is here, right? And his family is here. So it was more of a family type of vibe with Pop while he was here. We our day will be spent going out and having fun. We'll go out and to to we'll go look at the underground. The underground was popping in, in Atlanta, right? It's underground. Yep. He we'll loved that place. We'll go to the underground. We'll go hang out with him. We'll, we'll go hang out with Short at his house. You know all those kind of things he would Three. do here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, but everything else like the disruption in his life was mostly coming from out of New York and California. I just want to make that clear. He he cared about the common everyday man. He really cared about just the smallest things, little babies and little kids. Dude, dude was special because you can see it in his eyes. I, I would see him work in the studio and it'd be nothing but gangsters in the studio. And then me and him and Short and breathing there writing. And while he would rap in the mic room, fire would come out his eyes. Like his eyes would like just, it'd be like sparkling. I'm like, yo, with no homo, is it me? Or does spark, his fire come with sparkle of diamonds coming out this nigga died. They were like, uh, what's the one that died right after him? Y'all failed. Y'all failed. Yeah. Rest in peace, y'all. Rest in peace. I asked him, I looked at him, he said, they do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, like yeah. yeah, it sounds like Park should have stayed in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. I begged him not to get on that plane and go to New York. And yeah. it seemed like his right, life went on a roller coaster after he went to New York. And now yeah. that shit happened up there. Yeah, it looked like he should have just made Atlanta his stable place or whatever to live. Yeah, but we wish yeah, he would have. Yeah, we wish he would have. He had fun here, man. He had a lot of fun. This was his fun, this was his fun place. This he took pictures with place. every fan. Yeah. He 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 cared. Mm -hmm. He did. Yep. Yeah, it's a video online of him like playing football in Atlanta. That was our annual touch football Thanksgiving game we used to host. He used to play every Thanksgiving. We'll team up and we'll play touch football. Whoa. So that's what I mean. Like, this was like his his place of comfort. You know, he, he come to Atlanta. He had a community of friends that he was cool with. He had his family. There was always something to do here. All You know, he loved going to the titty clubs, loved going to the <laughs> You know, he loved going to the gun range, you know. He was a perfect shot. Yeah, yeah. He was an excellent marksman. We used to go to the paintball you know, we should go do paintball, uh, whatever the paintball was yeah. or whatever. Yeah. He loved that kind of stuff, you know? So here, he was more relaxed. He, he was less intense, you know, and he was comfortable. He was comfortable here in Georgia, you know? So. It was, and, and I remember when, when you guys did the memorial for him. Right. It was so beautiful. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people don't know that they did a memorial for him in Atlanta and like half the world showed up at the Civic yeah. Center. It was just sold out. Yeah. And 
Afeni was there. Yeah. You and your whole family and G and his wife and sister. Yeah. And all the rappers came in from all over the country. Yeah. But prior to that, they couldn't get it. Yeah. It was like they were, they would not give him a space to do a memorial for him. That's right. Tell them about that story. Yeah. Yo, I, I got to share this. So, uh, so when Pac got killed, we knew we wanted to cremate him, right? But Fanny wanted to do a memorial for him since he wasn't going to have a funeral, right? And she couldn't find any venue to do the memorial. We were we were always with Greg, we was always working with Greg at the time, and the idea came up for my brother in law to call Greg, so to see if he can pull some strings for us to get a venue like the Civic Center or like Phillips Arena. It wasn't Phillips Arena then, but like a venue like that. Yeah. So that we can put together a memorial for Pac that will honor him the way we wanted to honor him. Respectable. We, you know, so that people in the community can come out, rappers can come, whoever wanted to come, they can come and honor Pac's memory. And they did. And we called him. My brother-in-law called him and with my aunt and uh, Jasmine, you say? And it was Jasmine Guy. Jasmine. It was Kadada. And my sister, my Jones, cousin. Quincy Jones' Stephanie. daughter. Yeah. His sister and uh, mom's. Mom's. Yeah. Um, Afeni. Yeah, and my, my aunt. And I know this is true because my brother-in-law told me, I asked him, what, how did he get it? And he said, Big G put it together. He said, Big G put it together. And I always thanked him for that because... We couldn't find another venue. Let me let me give you a little bit more context. The reason why that was so important for us, for him to be able to do that, was because we were still grief grief stricken even more, because the day or two days before Pac's memorial, mm -hmm. Yaki Gaddafi had got killed in Jersey. In Jersey, you know, he got killed November tenth. Pac's best memorial friend. was going to be probably a day or two after that or something very, very close. So we were still grieving Pac, but also overwhelmed with grief because of y'all fail. We was really torn up, man. Yeah, it was a, you could you know cut, you could cut that tension in the air yeah. once you got into that uh, Civic Center arena. Yeah. And it was, it was well due and well deserved for him. Yeah, we was towed down, man. Like we, 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 we showed up cause it was Pac, but we was really towed down because we had just lost Killer Gaddafi. And I want to share one of the best memories I have of that event. Like you said, all the rappers came out. Yeah, they right? came. They showed up. Atlanta showed up. Atlanta showed up, yeah. right? But the rapper that made the most, the biggest impression on me was CeeLo Green. CeeLo had the whole And let me tell you crying. why. Yes, oh he had the... God! CeeLo Green was on stage, bare chest, he had no shirt on, and he was fat. Dude was fat. He had, his stomach was rolled over his pants. He was all fat. He was too fat. And he was, he was like, he was crying. He was, man. And he was so, he was so angry that this could happen to Pop. Yeah, he was. So angry, man. And he was just, all this emotion that he brought to that event was very memorable to he me. He had lost his mother. He did? Yeah. CeeLo oh, Green's oh, mother oh. was the first fireman in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, first black fireman, his mom. She was a pillar in the community. What? And he lost his mom, and so he, when well, that first album came out. So he was, when that Dear Mama record came out, CeeLo took that record like it was his. Wow. He felt it. That's, and that was another time when I seen a crowd cry. The whole Phoenix Club was crying when CeeLo came to perform on the night his mama died on the album release party. That was a special Atlanta. Shout out to CeeLo Green. And I, and, I, and I think Pac, me and Pac, in short, we all was in there and when that happened that night for CeeLo. So then for CeeLo to come to his memorial and give him all that love and just, yes, that, was that was amazing. Powerful, man. Goody Mob. Shouts out to Goody shout Mob. Out, shout out to them, man. Shout out to wow, CeeLo. Man. To the shout out to Goody Mob, man. I never love. heard that story before. Yeah, man. it's That's a true story. Man. I witnessed it with my very Coop own job. eyes. <laughs> when my word is born. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But Jose Williams was the reason we were able to get that Civic Center. Because yeah. they wouldn't give us no other Phillips Arena. They wouldn't give us no no other arena. Then we faked like we was we faked like we was about to feed some hungry people. Mm -hmm. And Jose went and got it. He was unbossed and unbought. 
He said, I'm in it. You need it. I put a Feeney on the phone with Jose, and we got the keys to that spot. It Yo, was Feeney, we were so happy that Greg was able to put that together because who would have thought the Civic Center? Like, we thought that that was going to be in, short, in a short time because when we asked for it, he called us back like a day or two, two days later. I don't remember how long, but it wasn't long. It was like exp expedient. You know, he called us back almost immediately would like, yo, y'all got y'all got the Civic Center. Y'all can put this together. Pronto, prop, and expeditiously. Yeah, expeditiously. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. And that was a beautiful... Atlanta gave Pac some love. Yeah. And, I mean, it really did need to be like a documentary made about his whole situation. Though. And here in Atlanta. Yeah, because he, he, he was making five songs a day, then go to the club, yep. leave the club, go make five more songs, yep. then wake up in the morning... He wasn't sleep maybe an hour in the studio, then get up and go shoot a movie. Yeah. Go get his teeth clean, then go shoot a movie. Then go work out, go shoot guns. It was then crazy. go back to the studio. Yeah, go again. shoot guns. Yeah, like he yeah, his schedule was like hectic. Like I had to pay my brothers to keep up with him. I couldn't keep up with him, bro. Yo, word is born, yo, in my family, right? Yo, yo, listen. Nobody ever wanted to wake Pac up. Like it, <laughs> niggas used to have to take turns. <laughs> Like, yo, Bill, it's your turn to wake up Pac. Like, nobody wanted to knock on his door to wake him up. Why? Because, number one, Pac, he gonna, he's going to scream at you and threaten to shoot you. That's number one. Uh -huh. And number two, when he answered the door, he's going to answer the door, but naked. <laughs> yo, nobody want to see that. Like, nobody want to see this nigga butt ass naked, cursing, at, cursing at you and calling you all kind of names and threatening to shoot you. Uh -huh. That was some crazy. So we used to all like, nah, I'm not doing it. You do it. Yo, that that's one of one of my favorite memories of the guy. Like he answered the door, stark staring naked, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy, man. One of my favorite ones was when uh him and MC Bree, we performed at Clark Atlanta University and the police was after Pot. It was right after he, he it was either before or after he shot the cops. Mm -hmm. Was that before or after? Maybe it had to be after. No, it was before it was, was after. It yeah, yeah, it was it after. Had to be after. Yeah, went to jail. And yeah, he yeah. still got out. We yeah. thought he was in jail. Yeah. So we get over to Clark, and we about to do the song. I mean, they sent me a breed up to a top. and was like, we was waiting like, man, where the hell is Pac at? Is he think he's going to come? We asking the cops. Y'all asking us where Pac is. We asking y'all, ain't he in jail? We ain't know. And all of a sudden, you hear the record come on. We hear the record come on, and we hear Pac rapping. I was like, breed, that's Pac right there. We ran down there, and he looked at us, and all the police were surrounding him, right? He, he did his rhyme. He looked at dude. Threw the mic to uh, Bree and surfed out. Like 10,000 people pushed him up out to all the way out to the streets. Got in his car, skirted off, went to the rim shop. I said, man, every cop in Atlanta looking for you. You at my shop, dog. You making me hot, man. He said, he said, it's better to, he said, he said, it's better them to know you than not to know you. Mm -hmm. I went from about one set of rims a week to about four sets a day after that. Wow. It was coming up in there. He made my business really good. That's dope. That dude was a good dude, man. Yo, so look, man, I want to turn it back over to the guard, Mark Curry. Before I leave, though, I want to shout out, yo, this this dude right here, man, is one of the, he's an Atlanta gem. You guys should talk to him and get this, these stories that he can tell to give you a bigger perspective of how big of a role Atlanta plays in hip-hop. Because he was... He was in the middle of that. He was in the middle of pre Goody Mob, pre uh, 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 Outcast. Outcast, pre Tip. You know, he was. There was no rap music. There was, was no hip hop in Atlanta. So they were doing that, booty shit. Get that when story I got for him. So shout out, shout out to Greg. Shout out to my man Mark Curry. Thank you, thank you for having me. God bless.